Hi, I'm Tony Northrup, and today I'd like to talk about wildlife photography equipment. Uh, of course, you know Chelsea, and I'm here with award-winning wildlife photographer Christopher Rao. Let's start by uh, talking about the lenses. Uh, what lens do you use there, Chris? Um, recently, I've been shooting a Tokina 300 2.8 ATX2. Uh, this is an autofocus lens, and it's a beauty of a bargain that I found. How much did you uh, spend on that? This one cost a whopping 450 bucks. And by modern day equivalents, a third party 302.8, they're going to be running about 2,500 to three grand. Uh, the Nikon equivalent is probably about 6,500, and the Canon equivalent is just about the same, 6,500. Yeah, so 450 <laughs> versus 6,500, that's a pretty good deal. That's a deal. That's a lot of savings. Yeah, I buy a lot of used gear too, and it's a great way to save some money. Think of all the money you can then spend on camera gear. You have some left over, buy other gear. Exactly. <laughs> so you're not being a cheapskate, you're just being efficient. Um, what lens do you have there, Chelsea? I have the Canon 400 5.6. I like it because it's really compact and light. I can get pretty close to whatever I'm shooting and I don't kill my arm or my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that Chelsea thinks that huge lens is small and light. Um, and it's because she spent a lot of time with this lens, which is the lens I usually use. It's a 500 millimeter f4 from Canon. Uh, this is the original, not the Mark II, which is like twice as expensive. Uh, I've had it for six or seven years and it's just a remarkable lens. Um, but it's a total pain to have to carry. And every time I have to carry this thing out for a hike, uh, I'm totally jealous of both of them. I can hand hold it, which is a big advantage over the 600 millimeter F4s, which are just like over that line. They're just like a little too big and heavy to even try. Um, so this wasn't the first wildlife lens I bought, obviously. I bought this only after I actually started making money shooting wildlife. Um, before that, I went through this long series of lenses. I had the 75 to 300 without IS and then with IS. And then I bought the 100 to 400 zoom, uh, which is not something I recommend. I always push people to the prime, though they always think the zoom is better because it's the zoom and it's got image stabilization, but it's just not sharp at 400 millimeters. That prime there is definitely a professionally sharp lens. Um, before you had that 300, Chris, what were you using? Um, before this, I was actually using a Tamron 200 to 500, which I did win a couple of awards with. The amazing thing about that lens is it's super light and weighs in like a little bit under three pounds. The aperture on these lenses is the, probably the second biggest factor besides the focal length, and that's why this is such a huge lens, because it's only a little bit longer than that lens, but it's an f4 instead of an f5.6, which means it lets in twice as much light. It's just one stop difference, but twice as much light lets me use one stop lower ISO. So the lower your maximum f-stop number on the lens, the cleaner the images you get, because the lower the ISO you'll be able to use. Whereas on this one, this is actually a 2.8, <clears throat> and for a 300 millimeter lens, it's pretty giant. There's been some really low light situations where I can open it up and shoot it at 2.8 and get shots I just wouldn't be able to get with another lens. Yeah, though I think 300 millimeters is typically a little short for wildlife type work, and that's, I bet you keep that teleconverter. Yeah, I, 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 time, I generally right? shoot, um, it's actually a Tamron SP teleconverter, which I see you're using now also, Yeah. <laughs> which is a 1.4, so you do lose one stop, but it effectively makes it a 420 f4, which for the price is still a pretty great bargain because if you went with like a Nikon 400 f4, the new Canon 400 f4 that just came out, you're talking, you know, almost in the $10,000 range. Yeah, so 20 times more than yeah, exactly. <laughs> what you spent I, on I that I try lens. to get 95% of the performance with like 5% of the price. So yeah, I see it. <laughs> you get the most bang for the buck out of any photographer I've ever known. Yeah. Another advantage of having a low minimum f-stop number, an f4 on this, is that I can use the 1.4x teleconverter. It turns it into a 700 millimeter f5.6 lens, and because it's still f5.6, I still have really good focusing capabilities, uh, even with the Canon 7D that I'm using here. So it gets me a little bit closer when I can't fill the frame at 500 millimeters, which is pretty common. Like, even at 500 millimeters, if you're going to fill the frame with a bird, you probably need to be in a blind or, you know, hiding out for hours on end. Uh, birds just in the wild or any animals in the wild just don't get that close to you. So you're always looking for more and more reach. I find the more reach you have, the more practice you need actually getting an animal in the frame because the closer you are, you, you just have to practice finding it in your viewfinder, right? I mean, I've gone out before with a teleconverter thinking I was going to nail it and just all over the place trying to find whatever I was looking for. Yeah, the longer your lens, the just technically harder it is just to find the bird in the frame. Whether And if it's a perched bird in a tree, it's hard. But if it's a flying bird coming at you, it can be really impossible. And it can take days or weeks of practice to be able to consistently put it in the frame. And even after many years of it, I still struggle sometimes. And yeah. I find I just can't, I miss my shot because I can't find just, a stupid bird. You just bird. lose them. They're, they are hard to track. Actually, yeah. I was lucky I went up incrementally because I started with the 70 to 200 and that was too far away, 200 millimeters. And then I went to this, I couldn't find anything. 
Yeah, your first setup was actually a good beginner setup. It was yeah. a 7200, which is a portrait lens, yep. plus a teleconverter, and that got you pretty good. Yeah, but you were so frustrated that it wasn't quite getting you close well, enough. Well, I ended up just shooting butterflies and stuff because these guys were great, getting great pictures of <laughs> Osprey, and mine were so far away, it was just a dot. I was like, I got it, I got it. You could hardly see it. So it was great practice, and it was a good experience, but now I'm happy to have these lenses to work with. Here, let's trade bodies for a sec, because I just want to show people that you can handhold this lens, because people think you have to yeah. use a tripod or a monopod with this thing. Yeah, I just brace but it against Chelsea my is body tiny. like this. I'm pretty small, I'm 5'4", <laughs> so I brace it against my body like this, and I can manage to hold it up for a while. I think I built some muscles too, but um, for an extended period of time, I just can't get steady enough, my arms start shaking, so. Yeah, even me, I can get it for a run. As an osprey's coming towards me, I can shoot throughout that entire period of, what, 20 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, but any more than that, and I have to uh, rest my arms a little bit. This lens, though, I can just hold it up with one yeah, hand. This it's one's super so, easy. This one's easy. So let's talk about the bodies a little bit. I recently switched from uh, something like $3,500 5D Mark III to a used 70 that I bought for $750 on eBay, and I like it better. So why would a cheaper camera body be so much better? Uh, and the answer is a smaller sensor size. 70 is in most compact cameras have these APS-C sized sensors that just kind of take the middle of the light image that's coming from your lens and they act like a teleconverter but without any of that light loss. So there are more pixels crammed into a smaller space and you actually manage to extract more detail out of your lens if you were going to have to crop anyway. And I mean, let's be honest, most of our wildlife shots are yeah, cropped, right? Yeah, pretty much all of them. Yeah, everybody <laughs> always preaches, oh, you got to fill the frame. But you can't do that. <laughs> Birds, I mean, they don't like you. They fly away <laughs> if you get that close. So yeah, Pretty much. Yeah, so you mentioned earlier that you've only worked with the crop bodies. Correct. And I yep. think most wildlife photographers do. Again, unless you're doing setup style wildlife photography. Um, but Chelsea, you prefer the full frame bodies. Yeah, I prefer the full frame. And I find that the 7D is a bit noisy for me. Um, I think I'm a bit spoiled. I think if I'd never had the Mark III, I wouldn't mind the extra noise. You don't mind the extra noise. You prefer the little extra sharpness, but I always prefer the Mark III. Tell us about the focusing on your cameras, Chris, and what's so, the difference between the different bodies? So one thing with Nikon that a lot of people get confused at in the beginning is that many bodies don't have a built-in focus motor, which nowadays maybe not so much of an issue because most of the current lenses are AFS and they will autofocus with all the newer bodies. Um, all the lower levels, like the D5100, the D5200, anything in the D3000 series are all stripped of the focus motor, which for your average people out taking snapshots of your family, it's fine. Once you start talking about getting like bargain lenses like I do, I went with a D300. I actually went through two other camera bodies in the first year of learning photography. I started with a D5000 um, and found I was so limited in trying to find a cheap lens for it, I had to give up. I switched over to a D90, which was great because then I had the built-in focus motor, but I always felt the AF system was a little bit slower. Uh, then I got the D300, which at this point is a six-year-old body, but still offers a lot of bang for the buck in the Nikon world. Um, I mean, you can pick these up pretty much all day long for about 500 bucks on eBay. Um, this particular one I've had for about a year now, and I've put 65,000 shots on it. Because <laughs> with birds, you take a lot of shots. Yeah, um, and delete most of them. <laughs> but this, this has a great autofocus system. Um, and one of the great things about this body, the lower ones don't have, all your controls right in the back. And one of the things that we've been kind of working on is the uh, AF on button, which is, I yeah. think, really important oh, for wildlife yeah, yeah. photography because it, it decouples the shutter from your autofocus system. So if there's an Osprey flying by like the one right there, um, you use your thumb to actually control the autofocus system. Yeah, imagine that you're photographing a heron that's uh, standing still and kind of hunting. Uh, normally you'd want to use one shot on that because you might want to recompose and put it in the left third of the frame, um, but you might not have a focusing point there. So if you were using one shot here, you could set one shot mode and do that. But then if the heron suddenly took off, you'd have to try to switch to continuous focusing and you just can't do that fast. Yeah, yeah. No. But with the AF on button, you do one shot by just tapping it and waiting till it's focused and then letting go. And then you can recompose. When it starts flying, you just hold it down and keep the focusing point on it. Another big factor with the camera bodies is the frames per second. And in the Canon world, the 70 clearly wins there. I think it's like seven and a half frames per second. It's ridiculous. Um, the Mark III is the second best at about six frames per second. But I shot for a long time with a 5D Mark II and it was at like three frames per second. And you know, with a 7D, I can get more than twice as many shots. One thing Tony didn't mention was buffer size. Right. And buffer size is huge. On the newer, you know, D7100, I think it's seven frames before the buffer chokes. Uh, my camera, even though it's older, um, it's obviously a 12 megapixel camera, but I can get about 25 shots in before the buffer slows down. 
Yeah, buffer size is a big deal. And that's another thing that the 5D Mark III has. Uh, I can shoot about 33 shots in a row on that at the six frames per second. Um, with the 7D, it runs out of buffer much faster. I think after like 13 shots, so what that means is I really have to kind of wait to take my shots until just the last minute. I can't just hold it down. I have to really manage my buffer and make sure that I don't fill the buffer up. Okay, so that sums up bodies, teleconverters, lenses. Uh, I don't think anybody here likes flashes. Uh, what about tripods? I always see everybody recommending get a big heavy tripod and then one of those $500 gimbal heads that like rotates around a center of gravity and stuff. What do you think? I, uh, yeah, I have a, a cheap big heavy tripod and you know what? I leave it home. It's not worth it to me. I actually, I tried a monopod with that, thinking that it would help me out with the weight. And it just, I couldn't move it around enough. I couldn't. Yeah, you're kind of like weird and it's, awkward. It's a strange and... angle. You're trying to lean back to get it into the sky if a bird flies by. And I, I didn't like a tripod or a monopod. I preferred to handhold as well. Cause... And what would happen to me when I'm using a tripod is a bird would inevitably fly over my head. Yeah, yeah, and then I'd be lifting my camera and the <laughs> monopod. And then yeah, I've got all this yeah. extra weight. This is not helping me. Yeah, exactly. I've done that. So let's talk about straps. Now, with this lens, I tend to just carry it by the handle. Um, I've tried straps and it's awkward and big, but it's a big and heavy lens. Uh, Chris, you have a pretty fancy getup well, there. My fancy getup is, of course, you know, being the bargain guy, I found a dual camera strap on eBay for about $18 ship. Um, I went to the hardware store and I believe it's a quarter by 20 screws. Um, and I actually bolted my tripod mount, which I don't use. But if I ever do need to use it, I have a quick release. I pull off one strap and I'm mounted on my tripod or monopod. I'll say I've also tried the uh, camera straps that attach to the tripod mounts, and a lot of people swear by them, but I, I don't like them. Now, you've got two mounts there, so it helps it right, hang a little more stable. Um, but you're attaching to the camera in just one place, and that means the camera like rotates and spins and swings, so I would say get two mounts like that or just use the strap that attaches to the camera body, at least with the lighter lens. You can't do that with a... You don't yeah. want the lens hanging off the camera body if it's this big. Um, so camo is something that uh, Chelsea and I have only recently started using. Um, before then, we would just kind of dress in drab colors, and I thought that was good enough. But I found once I switched to camo, and the more camo I wore, the closer I could get to birds. And I really could get twice as close to a bird in the wild before I disturbed them. Um, what's been your experience with the camo? Well, probably my best shot ever. I happened to be wearing this camouflage t-shirt hidden away in rocks, only the top half of me ex was exposed, and the osprey flew directly over my head at about 30 feet with a fish. Um, ever since then, I've pretty much been a believer. I mean, that was enough for me. <laughs> and even flying birds it. will avoid you if they see you. So yeah, yeah it's better to hide yeah. yourself, definitely. You look silly. People will think you're like a murderer or a hunter or something in the yeah. woods. It's worth it because then people don't come up to you and say, big camera. Yeah, yeah. You look terrifying in your camo. <laughs> yeah, and you can see we've even got these neoprene covers for our uh, lenses um, that just help mask the big white lens. I don't know why Canon makes their lenses big and white. Yeah, you can see um, underneath here. Even when it's warm, I tend to wear long pants and long sleeves just because of the mosquitoes. Um, and we've been really struggling with them today. Chris is always smart enough to bring some bug spray, but we yeah, always yeah. forget. Yeah. Because you want to be careful. You want to wear yeah. appropriate clothing and good footwear because we went out a few times and I think I was wearing flip flops. Yeah, bad idea. Um, <laughs> big yeah, mistake. I broke my 5D Mark III because I was wearing a $10 set of flip flops. It cost me $900 in camera repairs because I didn't buy bothered to put on sneakers. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just came out of the mud and my foot was covered in mud and my foot flop slipped off and I yeah. fell on my lens. <laughs> memory cards are also really important. Of course you want a nice big memory card because you're going to be taking a lot of pictures, but you also want a fast memory card. And there's no one right answer because different camera bodies support different card technologies to improve the speed. So research which cards are fastest with your camera. The faster the card is, the quicker it's going to be able to unload that buffer and the more shots you're going to be able to get in a row. Uh, with my 5D Mark III, it went from 18 shots in a row to 33 shots in a row when I just upgraded to a faster CF card. One other thing I have is, I don't remember where I got it, but I have a little card flap right here where I always have an extra card ready to go with me, so. Oh, that's smart. He's always prepared. Just in case. <laughs> Chris the Boy Scout. All right, thanks. Uh, and please check out Chris's portfolio. You're on Facebook, right? Yep. Christopher Rao Photography, R-O-W-E. Uh, and check out our Facebook page too, Northrop Photography. And of course, if you like this video, you'll probably like my book, Stunning Digital Photography, oh, which yeah. you can get on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty cheap. Uh, check the links in the description below. Also, give me a uh, subscribe so you can see more videos like this and click like down below. Thank you so much.